two projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project Artificial Rabbits Optimizer with Machine Learning Based Emergency Department Monitoring and Medical Data Classification at KSA Hospitals. Introduction Amid the escalating prevalence of heart diseases globally, this project addresses the urgent need for more accurate prediction methods. Heart-related conditions are on the rise, necessitating advanced tools for early detection and intervention. The significance of this project lies in its potential to revolutionize heart disease prediction. Accurate models can significantly impact public health by enabling timely and targeted interventions, thereby mitigating the growing burden of cardiovascular illnesses. Focused on enhancing heart disease prediction, the project employs state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms and feature engineering techniques. By assessing models like Artificial Rabbits Optimizer with Machine Learning, Voting Classifier combining Naive Bayes and Logistic Regression, Decision Tree with Gradient Boosting, Naive Bayes Decision Tree Support Vector Machine, we aim to identify the most effective approach for accurate predictions. So this project benefits healthcare professionals, researchers and individuals concerned about heart health. Accurate prediction models provide a proactive approach to healthcare, enabling personalized interventions and improving outcomes for individuals at risk of heart diseases. And with heart diseases becoming a leading cause of mortality worldwide, the outcomes of this project have the potential to contribute significantly to the global health landscape. Timely and accurate predictions empower healthcare systems to address the growing challenges posed by cardiovascular conditions. Object of the project. So, as I mentioned earlier, the primary goal is to create a sophisticated machine learning model specifically tailored for heart disease prediction. This involves implementing advanced algorithms and incorporating feature engineering techniques to enhance the model's accuracy and effectiveness. And the aim is to evaluate the performance of a variety of machine learning models, namely Artificial Rabbits Optimizer with Machine Learning, Voting Classifier Combining Naive Bayes and Logistic Regression, Decision Tree with Gradient Boosting, Naive Bayes, etc. This comprehensive analysis aims to identify the most effective model for accurately predicting heart disease based on the data set. And we aim to leverage the power of Artificial Rabbit Optimizer, that is ARO, for feature selection. This involves identifying and selecting the most relevant features from the data set, therefore improving the model's ability to recognize key factors contributing to heart diseases. And the objective also includes extending the scope of the project by assessing model performance on two distinct heart disease data sets. This extension includes a comparative analysis of accuracy across different machine learning algorithms. The goal is to provide a thorough understanding of how various models perform in diverse data environments, enhancing the project's overall insights. Requirements needed to execute this project are software requirements. Software needed is Anaconda. Primary language used is Python. Frontend framework used is Flask. Backend framework used is Jupyter Notebook. Database used is SQLite 3. And frontend technologies used are HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap 4. Hardware requirements needed are operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8GB and above, and hard disk of 25GB and above. Now we'll discuss the working modules of law of work. So the first step is important required packages. In this step, essential libraries such as Pandas, NumPy, sklearn, and feature selection that is FS are imported. These serve as the foundational tools for data manipulation, analysis, and implementing machine learning models. The second step is exploring the data set. So in this step, the heart disease data sets are thoroughly examined to understand the structure, variables, and inherent patterns providing crucial insights for subsequent analysis. The third step is data processing. In this step, Pandas is employed to create a data frame, ensuring data cleanliness through operations like handling missing values or outliers. This lays the groundwork for accurate model training. The next step is visualization using Seaborn and Matplotlib. Here, Seaborn and Matplotlib are used for data visualization. This visual analysis aids in uncovering trends, correlations, and patterns within the data, contributing to informed model development. The next step is feature engineering using artificial rabbit optimizer, that is ARO. 
So in this step, feature engineering is performed using artificial rabbit optimizer. This optimization enhances the model's ability to identify essential patterns relevant to heart disease prediction. The next step is appending the feature column to X and target to Y. In this step, the data set is structured by appending engineered features to X and the target variable to Y, preparing it for machine learning model training. The next step is train and test split. Here, the data set is split into training and testing sets. This division is crucial for evaluating model performance on unseen data, ensuring reliable predictions. The next step is training and building the model. In this step, machine learning algorithms, including decision trees, support vector machines, and symbol methods are applied to train models for heart disease prediction. The most accurate model is selected based on evaluation metrics. And in the next step, as an extension, hybrid models are introduced by combining predictions from various individual models. This creates more robust and accurate final prediction, elevating the overall performance of the system. And in the next step, as an extension again, Flask is set up with SQLite to implement user authentication functionalities such as sign up and sign in, ensuring secure and personalized interactions. So after signing in, users input feature values for prediction. And in the next step, user inputs are pre-processed for compatibility with trained models. The models are then utilized to make predictions based on the provided feature values. And the final prediction outcome is displayed through the Flask frontend, thereby enhancing the practical usability of the predictive model. Now we'll understand about the algorithms used. So the first algorithm built is artificial habit optimizer with decision tree. So this algorithm combines the artificial habit optimizer that is ARO algorithm with the decision tree model. ARO is inspired by the behavior of rabbits in finding the optimal path applying optimization techniques to enhance feature selection and model parameters. The decision tree algorithm builds a tree-like structure of decisions based on features, making it suitable for classification tasks like heart disease prediction. ARO's optimization capabilities improve the decision tree's accuracy by fine-tuning its parameters. The second algorithm built is voting classifier with nigh base and logistic regression. So VNBLR involves a voting classifier that combines the predictions of nigh base and logistic regression models. Nigh base assumes independence between features, calculating probabilities for each class. Logistic regression predicts the probability of a binary outcome. The voting classifier aggregates these diverse predictions, potentially improving accuracy. This ensemble approach leverages the strengths of both models for more robust heart disease predictions. The third algorithm built is neural network that is ANN. So networks simulate the human brain's neural structure. In this project, an artificial neural network that is ANN is employed. ANNs consist of interconnected nodes that is neurons organized into layers. They learn complex patterns through iterative training on labeled data. For heart disease prediction, the ANN identifies intricate relationships within the dataset, capturing non-linear dependencies for accurate predictions. The next algorithm built is decision tree. So decision trees recursively partition the dataset into subsets based on features, forming a tree-like structure. Each node represents a decision based on feature conditions. In heart disease prediction, Decision trees analyze patient attributes to make binary decisions, leading to a final prediction. They are interpretable and effective for feature importance analysis. The next algorithm is support vector machine that is SVM. So SVM is a powerful classification algorithm. It identifies an optimal hyperplane that best separates classes in a high dimensional space. SVM is effective in capturing complex relationships and is suitable for heart disease prediction where non-linear patterns might exist. It aims to maximize the margin between classes, enhancing generalization to new data. The next algorithm built is decision tree with gradient boosting. So this involves enhancing a decision tree through gradient boosting. Gradient boosting builds trees sequentially, correcting errors of previous trees. In this project, it improves decision tree accuracy by focusing on areas where the initial tree performed poorly. This iterative approach enhances the overall model's predictive power for heart disease detection. And the next algorithm built is Nybase. So Nybase is a probabilistic algorithm based on Bayes' theorem. It assumes features are independent, 
simplifying calculations. In heart disease prediction, NIE base calculates probabilities for each class, making it computationally efficient and suitable for data sets with a large number of features. Now we see the comparison graphs of the algorithms built using Cleveland data set. So this is the horizontal bar graph comparing accuracies of different algorithms. In this graph on X axis, I have accuracy scores and on Y axis, I have algorithm names. So accuracy measures the overall correctness of predictions showing the percentage of correctly classified instances. And this is precision scores comparison graph. In this graph on X axis, I have precision scores. And on Y axis, I have algorithm names. So precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions, indicating how many predicted positives were actually correct. This is recall scores comparison graph. In this graph on X axis, I have recall scores. And on Y axis, I have algorithm names. So recall measures the ability to identify all relevant instances, showing how many actual positives were correctly predicted. And this is F1 scores comparison graph. In this graph on X axis, I have F1 scores. And on Y axis, I have algorithm names. So F1 score combines precision and recall into a single metric, balancing accuracy and completeness in predictions. So the algorithm which is best performing in all the performance metrics will be used for predictions. Now we'll see the comparison graphs for stat log data set. So this is the accuracy comparison graph. This is precision scores comparison graph. This is recall scores comparison graph. And this is F1 scores comparison graph. Execution of the project. To execute this project first, we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files. So this is FS folder. This folder contains Python main code files. And this folder contains Cleveland dataset and this folder contains the statlog dataset. So this is static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to frontend logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML pages. And these are Jupyter source files. So these files contain a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. So Jupyter source files allow users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. And this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. So now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. I'm copying it. Open anaconda prompt. So use the command cd followed by a space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command will change the current directory to the code folders path. So now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py. I'm typing python space app.py and hit the enter button. So this command will execute the Python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address, local host and port unless configured differently. Now copy the local link provided by the framework. I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I prefer Chrome. After pasting it, hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. So here we can see a sign up link, click on it. So if you are new users, we have to register first, fill in all these details and click on sign up button to register. And if we already have an account, we can directly log in by clicking on this link. So as I already have an account, I'm clicking on this link. So here we have to provide a credentials, username and password. and click on sign in button. So it has redirected us to the classification page. So here we can see home link, click on it. So we can see Cleveland and Statlog. We can execute this project using two data sets, Cleveland and Statlog. First we'll execute it using Cleveland, click on it. 
So here we have to fill in these parameters and click on predict button to get the classifications. First, we'll understand these parameters. So chest pain type describes the type of chest pain a patient experiences aiding in cardiovascular diagnosis. Fasting blood sugar indicates the fasting blood sugar level providing insight into potential diabetes related risks. Resting electrocardiographic records the resting electrocardiographic results offering a baseline assessment of heart health. Exercise induced angina indicates whether angina is triggered by exercise, a crucial factor in assessing cardiovascular stress. Old peak measures the depression of the ST segment during exercise, aiding in evaluating heart functionality. Slope describes the slope of the peak exercise ST segment, offering insights into heart performance during exertion. And number of major vessels, CA, represents the count of major vessels colored by fluoroscopy, crucial in assessing coronary artery health. So now we'll fill in these parameters. So chest pain type would be 4. Fasting blood sugar is 0. Testing electrocardiographic would be 2. Exercise induced angina would be 1. Old peak is 1.9. Slope is 2. And number of major vessels would be 2. Now click on predict button. So here we can see the outcome that is the patient is diagnosed with heart disease. So for the given set of parameters, the patient has the heart condition. Now click on home link, click on Cleveland. We'll try again giving another set of parameters. So this time chest pain type would be 4. Fasting blood is 0. Resting electrocardiographic would be 0. Exercise induced angina would be 0. Old peak is 0 0.3. Slope is 1. And number of major vessels is 2. Now click on predict button. So here we can see the outcome that is the patient is not diagnosed with heart disease. Now click on home. This time... We'll execute the project using Statlog dataset. Click on Statlog. Now we have to fill in these parameters. First, we'll understand these parameters. So chest pain type describes the nature of chest pain aiding in the classification of cardiovascular conditions. Resting BP represents the blood pressure level during rest, a vital indicator of cardiovascular health. Fasting blood sugar indicates the fasting blood sugar level offering insights into potential diabetes related risks. Exercise induced angina indicates whether angina is triggered by exercise providing critical information about cardiovascular stress. Old peak measures the ST segment depression during exercise assisting in the assessment of cardiac performance. And thalassemia represents a genetic blood disorder affecting homoglobin production potentially influencing cardiovascular health. So now we'll fill in these parameters. So chest pain type is 3. Resting BP is 118. Fasting blood sugar would be 0. Exercise induced angina would be 0. Old peak is 0 0.8. And thalassemia is 3. Now click on predict button. So here we can see the classification that is the patient is diagnosed with heart disease. So for the given set of parameters, the patient has the heart condition. Now click on home link, click on stat log. We'll try again giving another set of parameters. So this time chest pain type would be 3. Resting BP is 140. Fasting blood sugar is 0. Exercise induced angina is 0. Old peak is 0 0.2. And thalassemia is 7. Now click on predict button. So here we can see the result that is the patient is not diagnosed with heart disease. So similarly we can give any set of parameters and can get the classifications. Now click on sign out. So the conclusion here is. The project successfully implemented an innovative ensemble of machine learning models including ARO with ML, VNBLR, Neural Network, Decision Tree, SVM, Decision Tree with Gradient Boosting and NIBES. 
This diverse set of models contributed to a more accurate and robust heart disease prediction system. And by leveraging advanced techniques like artificial rabbit optimizer, the project achieved optimized feature selection. This enhanced the model's ability to capture crucial patterns, resulting in improved accuracy and reliability in predicting heart diseases. And by extending the project to include hybrid models and ensemble methods such as stacking classifier and voting classifier, we explored avenues beyond individual model predictions. This approach further boosted predictive performance, showcasing the potential of combining diverse algorithms for superior outcomes. And the integration of a Flask framework with SQLite for user authentication and a user-friendly frontend elevated the project's practical applicability. Users can easily input feature values, receive accurate predictions, and interact with the system seamlessly. And the project's extension to evaluate Additional ensemble techniques, including stacking classifier and voting classifier, highlights a commitment to continuous improvement. This provides avenues for future research and development in refining heart disease prediction models. Thank you for watching video. For more projects, please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.